Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Lighthouse Missionary Baptist Church. Good morning, worship service. Coming live to you from my office once again. But we are open to praying that we will get back to our in person services soon. We also pray that God has been blessing you and your families throughout this past week. And you know that God will continue blessing you in the week to come. Service will be due to you again at the work from last week and the following. We'll just share our scripture lesson with you. And then bring the message for the day. We truly hope and pray that something said or done in the course of our service will be a blessing to you, each and every one of you. We're blessed to have you in our midst. And we pray that God will truly bless you tremendously. Today we we want to share <clears throat> from Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 to 4. <coughs> and it reads as follows. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is for me because the Lord has no me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim freedom to the captives, and release from darkness from the prisoners. For the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. Restore to bestow on them the crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. Then we call oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of the splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. I read in the hearing of the chapter 61 verses 1 through 4. May God add a blessing to his holy word and sanctify it for our hearts. I'd like to share with you from the thought today from the ashes of life. <coughs> from the ashes of life. What are ashes? Lighthouse? Some might think it's not a question to ask. But it's a perplexing question if you really take the time to think about it. What are ashes? Ashes, as many understand it, is what is left after wood have finished burning in fireplaces, the charcoal in a grill, or the remnants of a cigarette that has been smoked. But in the context of our theme today, 
from the ashes of life. I believe as many others do. That ashes represent our wounds in life. There are places in our lives where we are prone to sorrow and despair. They reflect things in life that are difficult or so difficult that it becomes extremely hard to see a way out. Things like poverty, addiction, depression, mental illness, death, Cancer and illnesses of all types. Job rep repented in ashes. God reduced the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes. Throughout scripture, ashes signify our human condition. Ashes reminds us that trials produce humility and sacrifices can bring about renewal. From the ashes of life. In Isaiah chapter 61, the prophet Isaiah brings a message of hope and restoration to the fallen nation of Israel. In Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 3 in particular, he speaks to us about the concept or the idea of beauty for ashes. You see, guys, people lose suffering all too well. They, underst they also understood the pain that came along with it. Being captives in a foreign land, they were forced to endure hardship because of their sin and rebellion against the Lord. But the prophet Isaiah reassured them that there was one who would redeem their pain and rescue them from their oppression. This man was Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The concept or idea of beauty for ashes, or a crown of beauty instead of ashes, is a scriptural promise detailed in Isaiah 61. During a time when it was customary to put on sackcloth, and sit in ashes during times of grief and repentance. Isaiah announces that God had sent him to proclaim good news for the poor, freedom for prisoners, and comfort for the broken heart. What he is describing in the lighthouse is the heart of the one who cleanses the ash from our lives and clothes all of us in the beautiful gift of salvation. The ashes of grief from shame and disgrace are exchanged with the reward of an everlasting covenant to be God. Isaiah 61 and 8. Although we, not, we are not returning from exile in Babylon, God knows that we are experiencing all forms of exile, darkness, and folk. Because he gave us the free choice or the free will to choose between him and our 
sinful nature. His promise here of beauty for ashes is the very life in his breath. He speaks in Isaiah 61 to assure us, of, to assure us excuse me, that no destructive force in our lives is greater than his plan to redeem it all. Isaiah delivers a promise of hope to Israel that holds true for all Christians today. With these words, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for men. The nation Israel and the surrounding areas, ashes exemplified loss and mourning. Like Job, the people set among or sprinkle themselves with ashes when breathing the death of someone whom they care. After a national disaster or, re or when repenting of a sin. Or after experiencing a personal tragedy, such as rape or an act of violence. Ashes were a physical representation of that longing, or that deep or soul searching recognition that we need our God to bring about healing and wholeness to places where we are deeply hurt. In the case of the Israelites and later the people of Judah, the people experienced captivity because they rebelled against God. Despite his warnings, they continued to turn away worshiping of his other gods and other practices like sacrificing the children on altars of fire. We must understand, I have that God will allow us to wallow or flounder around in the ashes of life when we make mistakes, when we are disobedient, when we turn our back on Him, in order to get our undivided attention. Because he longs above all else for our hearts to return back to him. Christ came to give us beauty for actions. And because he did, we can anticipate a future with hope. No matter how difficult our circumstances in life, or how challenging our season becomes. We know that no matter what we go through, that God will never leave us. That He is merciful and forgiving. We will recognize Lighthouse, the Lighthouse that Jesus tenderly cares for us and meets our every need. It has conquered sin. And just as important, we will see that the trials of life are temporary. We may think to ourselves that the trials are like seem to go on and on. Being us down and holding us hostage. The good news today is that the trials of this life are temporary. And that Jesus will remove our suffering and replace it with 
great deal. That is great news for us today. We no longer have to remain trapped in the ashes of a once vibrant and productive life. And we can begin to rise up from the ashes of neighborhoods destroyed by our own sinfulness and disobedience. In closing, Jesus is waiting and he is willing to remove our suffering and replace it with joy. But only if we give our hearts back to God. Questions I leave you with today are these. How much longer will you sit in the ashes of life? Ashes of a life that you have destroyed. And how much more suffering will you endure before you repent and invite Christ into your life? and rise up from the ashes of this life. I want to repeat that again for our prayers. How much longer will you sit in the ashes of a life you have destroyed? How much more suffering will you endure before you repent and invite Christ into your life? and rise up from the ashes of this life. A lot depends on that decision. God wants to bless us abundantly. But he can't do that until we recognize how we are sinful and disobedience. We won't do it until we repent and invite Christ back into our lives. Until then, we will remain in the ashes of lives we have destroyed. In our neighborhoods where we remain in a state of desolation and destruction until we repent, until we invite Christ into our lives. How much longer, my friends, will we endure pain and suffering? How much longer will we sit in a heap of action? Ashes that we have created through our own disobedience and sinfulness. The choice is yours today. Will you repent? Will you receive Christ into your heart? And will you let him replace that suffering the pain? the ashes, the joy that only can keep you from the ashes of the earth. The door went to the door of the church at this time. We don't know who we have viewing our service on today. You may be having years who have not embraced Christ as Savior. Someone who have been invited by other people who have viewed our services or by one of our members. Who may be moved by this message? Mm -hmm. Maybe at the point in their lives where they realize that 
this time with the life up here, and with the lives to things. And then if that is you, if you are healing serves today, and you know that it's time to give your life to Christ, we invite you to come to Christ by way of baptism. We are between churches and we in our service today by chance, God is speaking to your accent. He wants you to know that it's time to stop straddling your fence. It's time to come back into fellowship. Where it may have happened in the past, God wants you to put the rest into the United States Church where you can fellowship where you can be in fellowship, where you will be prayed for and for you, where you will be fed to work on. And if you are viewing today and you've been away from God and from the church for so many years that you no longer feel as though you, you haven't been left in God, we just want you to know today that that faith is still there. That it's pushed so far down that you no longer recognize it. That you have any faith left in God. That's your circumstances. And made it so that God has been pushed so far back on the back burners of your life that you. No longer feel the soul that God has any part or plays any role in your life. He just mentioned it in the day that your faith is still there. It, that if you reach down far enough from my brothers and sisters, we can go over to the heaven and embrace it as you did so many years ago. But the call to start the ship goes out. Whatever session you may be in. God is calling you. He's calling you to come to Him. That He might be your God and that you might be His people, His child, His children. Time to make a decision is now. The old saying that you can tomorrow, that you can do today, is so applicable. But we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know whether we'll even be here. So embrace that cliche for that quote that has been around for a long time. You don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Come to Christ now. God bless you all. Please read the, the announcement, speak the lesson, and everything that's been posted. So you can be aggressive with what we're doing here at the White House. But definitely scripture, we read it and see how God speaks to your heart during the course of this um, week. Again, we read all the all the things that have been posted, the flyers, everything that has been there, have been posted today with your education. And we just pray that God will bless you throughout the rest of this day, that He will prepare you for this coming week, and that no matter what, what might come your way as you journey through this coming week, know that God is able, that He is willing, and that He is able to do all things except the day. We'll see you, same time, same place, same station.